Deep breaths. Uh, Will and Margot, they gone. They gone. But, oh, what a lucky sofa. What is going to sit on it now? Hey, let's meet them. He is the biggest sporting icon in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, it is David Beckham! <laughs> thought I was lying. I really, I think they thought this is some big wind-up. It's a hidden camera show. Yeah. Uh, lovely to see you both. It's good to see yeah, you too big. again. Oh, Hi, dear. everybody. How are you? Nice. Nice. <laughs> so they spoke to us. Oh. <laughs> is it, by the way, now, I, obviously you chatted backstage, but do you know each other? Have you met? We have met. We have met quite We've a few met times yeah, at Wimbledon. Yeah. That's right. Um, oh, yeah. At the Met Ball in the New Met York. Ball. Uh, and a couple of other places. All right, you're all friends, fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, how did you recognize him? Did you recognize him at Wimbledon? Of course. Well, no, because he looks so. This is. This is there you are. It looks like you're in yeah. disguise. He did come up to me asking for drugs, but apart from that. <laughs> okay, that's a joke, joke, a joke. <laughs> now, are you a football fan? Yeah, I, I love all sport. I mean, we have to be because he's in. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But <laughs> actually, I'm a Norwich City football fan. Norwich City. It's a. W <laughs> it's the <a> one <laughs> pub you can mention. Really? Thank you. Is that Delia? <laughs> no, <laughs> but no one's upset with you for supporting yeah. Norwich. Everyone goes, oh, all right. But no you, one. you did trials for Norwich City. I yeah. did a long time ago. Yeah, it didn't work out. Ago. They didn't no. like, see any time. <laughs> there for a couple of weeks yeah, yeah. and uh, David do your kids know who you're on the couch with tonight yeah they are well aware of it but it's quite late tonight yes. so obviously my youngest son it's his birthday tomorrow so he's in bed early trying to kind of get to his birthday a little bit quicker is this cruise? Um, but they're well aware yes yeah, cruise but cruise of oh, a cruise I of know, all people I know, I here's know. cruise look <laughs> It's his birthday tomorrow, oh, and you didn't bring him. I know, I know. Now I feel bad. <laughs> That's great. That's what, what, what was that for? Was that it Halloween? Was Halloween. Fantastic. Oh. Where is Bruce? Bruce, how are you, mate? Dear, your dad's terrible. You should have stayed up. I mean, whatever he says, don't worry. We'll go out to a pub tomorrow night. Okay? Well, he's ten, right? He's ten. He's old enough. Yeah, he's ten. And both of you, both of you have that thing. You know, you're you're bringing up kids, and you know, in lots of ways, they're incredibly fortunate and the fabulous lives. But you both come from regular backgrounds, so it must be kind of weird trying to get your kid not to be in that bubble, to, like, be a bit regular. No, it's constantly... We, uh, we talk about it all the time. You stray them in supermarkets, yeah. things like that. I mean, my dad... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take him to the pub. Yeah. Leave him at the yeah. pub. Yeah. Take your own way home! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah but it, is a, it is a constant sort of worry. But most of the time, my kids don't want to be recognised that way. They want normal... Well, except when I saw Oscar... He came up to he was talking with some girls and he came up and he goes, Dad, I've told him your Wolverine sign autograph from <laughs> <laughs> Apart from that moment, most of the time, they just want to be treated normally. But it's, yeah. it is a, it's a dance, because people do treat them differently. Yeah, you must do. get that. Well, yeah. But also, yeah. David, you've got the double whammy. Not only do they have the embarrassment of having a very famous father, they have the embarrassment of a very famous father in his pants all over the world. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, that's a cruel thing to do that? to children. What do they say? Um, they actually don't mind it. I don't know. Well, <laughs> maybe they do. I think my own, actually Brooklyn probably doesn't like it. Um, seeing his dad in his pants at 40 years old, nearly. So um, you looking know, good. I don't know. Yeah. I'm looking alright. Yeah. <laughs> but it, but <laughs> but right. it, but it is. You know, it's a constant thing that you know me and Victoria are on top of. Obviously, at. <laughs> <laughs> Speak quicker, speak quicker. <laughs> um, I'm trying to have to think how to rephrase that. Um, me and Victoria are very aware of, um, you know, of, of obviously bringing our children up in the right way and, and looking after them, make sure they have the most normal upbringing as possible. Yeah. And uh, we've done that for many, many years. You know, uh, our eldest, well, Brooklyn has had a job for the last two years in a small French cafe, uh, no, which he saying, enjoys. When, yeah, well, we read about... Well, I think we, probably everyone was saying, when you read about that, you thought, good on David Victoria, that's great, he's got a job. 
But presumably Brooklyn was thinking, I know how much you're worth, why am I fucking <laughs> with <the> strangers? <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, I just think it was something he because he kept on coming to us and saying, you know, I've seen these new trainers. Can I go and buy them? And I'm like, no, it's not how it works. Uh, and he said, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. He did say that. <laughs> uh, but, um, but he came to us and you know he was asking for things and pocket money and things like that. And we said, okay, well, you know, we uh, we lived close to the coffee shop, so we said. You know, I love I love it in there every Sunday. So I go there most Sundays, and I said, you know, I spoke to the owner. I said, you know, can my eldest come and come and work there? And he said, yeah, great. So he does three or four hours on a Saturday, and the same on a Sunday. Um, and you know, he gets pocket money. So yeah, I think you. You know, it's this uh, yeah. horrible for him. Good for you. He enjoys, for you. <laughs> yeah. he enjoys it. Here's, here's the thing, though. Could David? Because David can't really bring all his kids to a new movie, Chappie. And people, I think, will right. think. They could, because I've right. seen the movie. This new movie, Chappie, is great. Yeah. But it sounds like a kid's movie, but it's not. No, it's R-rated. Uh, well, is it R-rated No, here? no, it's not R-rated. It's, it's 15. not R-rated. 15, 15 here. 15. Yeah, so... So I, Brooklyn I, could go... Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't bring my 10-year-old or my 9-year-old okay. to it. No, but it's uh, just a little too much violence. But it'd take my 10-year-old to a pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a family-oriented <laughs> Yeah. Not a pub with a play blasted. area. A pub with a play area. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it, and it's that idea of artificial intelligence, yeah. but with a conscience. So in our world, police are being replaced by police robots. So, uh, and very successfully, they're doing a great job. So the guy who invented it really is interested in artificial intelligence. So he invents this robot with true artificial intelligence. So it can think, it can feel, it can write poetry, it can paint, and it's creative. So. This is, when he switches on, it's like a baby, and there's only one that exists. And it's weird, because you think of these films, oh, dystopian future, robots, it's all going to be terrible. But you fall in love with this robot. You people, my wife cried. Yeah, no, you do. You to it's so but sweet. The, in a way, the most human thing about the movie is that robot. And uh, you really side for it. So it's, it's a very interesting, different take on the sci-fi genre. But most different of all, ladies and gentlemen, Hugh Jackman plays... <gasps> The baddie. Yeah. You do, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I don't mean, a pants on all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> He's behind <laughs> you, David! <laughs> is born, it, born for it. Uh, is that why you wanted to do it? I, I first wanted to do it for Neil. Neil Blomkamp, who did District 9, Elysium, is, he's a visionary. He's a maverick, he's a great filmmaker. And then he said, my character's gonna have a mullet. And I said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't want to have a mullet as a bad guy? But playing the bad guy is great. I, I don't get asked to do it a lot, but I spent all this time kind of doing heroes. The hero sucks. You get beaten up the entire movie. <laughs> and then you kind of get yourself up, and at the very end, you win the final battle, being beaten up a lot. The villain gets the best dialogue, wins every fight, except for the last one. That's okay. So, much <laughs> easier ride. It's great. Let's have a look at you uh, in action. This is uh, Chappie, the robot we spoke about, has gone missing, yep. and uh, you've gone to find it. Mm. All right, got him. 300 metres up ahead. Approach slowly, stop at a safe distance. Hello, hey, boys. The target appears to be a police droid, but I'm going to assure you it is not. Now, don't be intimidated. And he's as smart as a dunny rat, so full aggression, OK? Copy that. Copy that. Oi! Oh! You tease! Chappie's out on uh, March the 6th. March the 6th. And it's like, nice to hear you being Australian and using all your Australian expressions. It's so rare for me. Yeah. I, I actually, uh, embarrassingly, I had to go on Google to search Aussie slang. Because he says, no, nah, mate, I need more Australian. I'm like, what do you mean more Australian? He goes, because he'd written lines like, I'm mad as a frog in a sock. Right? And I said, oh, I've never heard anyone say that. And he goes, no, it's here it is on Google. So I'm Googling Aussie slang. So was you as smart as a dunny rat? Smart as a dunny rat. There it is, Google. Thank you very much. <laughs> How to write a script. Yeah. Just Google it. But and, anyway, yeah. And David, did that hair bring you back? 
Yeah, I've had a few. <laughs> I've definitely had that look. <laughs> you have? Really? Yeah. Is that why they cut you from Norwich? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thing I guess you're a man like you're not Rachel from friends and yet whatever you do to your hair it becomes a thing yeah it does believe it or not yeah so do you <laughs> some do of you... them have been really bad <laughs> so do, you, do you think ahead do you kind of no, go oh, I what? don't no I don't there's certain ones that I've just done just off the cuff so there's no shame in some of them before any of the hipsters are doing it I'm not ashamed it. of any of them well you <laughs> should be ashamed of some of them <laughs> <laughs> Before any of the hipsters were doing it, you had the top knot. There you go. Lovely. Uh, and that's almost a practical that's thing. That's not though. bad. Yeah. yeah, no, it's fine. That's it's fine. Bad. This one, okay, what was going on here? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was maybe a bad decision. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bad timing as well because I was actually going to uh, South Africa at the time with England um, and I ended up meeting uh, Nelson Mandela. I know you did. And the, and the pictures that. <laughs> So that's why, that's why I regret that. <laughs> <laughs> there are other reasons, but uh, we'll, we'll give it that. Yeah. And then the maddest one, the most on David Beckham look, I think, is this one. Because yeah. that yeah. doesn't seem like you at all. Big smiley face there. No. Well, I, I don't know why I had that one. Too. <laughs> I, don't, I was asked to shave it off when I first did it. I was, I was sat in the uh, changing room and I had a hat on at the time because Sir Alex Ferguson hadn't seen it. Um, so obviously that was interesting when I took my hat off and uh, we had an hour before the kickoff and he said uh, go and shave it off. Really? Uh, which I had said no at first and then I saw his face change very quickly so I <laughs> went and shaved it off in the, uh, in the toilet. Oh. Yeah. So actually, would Alex Ferguson would actually be sort of strict on that stuff? Very. Really? Very, yeah. Wow. What did he expect? It, it, it was just the, you know, it was a reputation of the club. Right. He wanted all the players to kind of be professional and he felt that it wasn't the right look and I shaved it off. We were playing at Wembley as well so he kind of had a point. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we just saw pictures of you in, in Paris with him at the match and yeah. smiling happy. You obviously get on now. Yeah, we, yeah. You, we, we get on this. But it did get bad for a while. Um, I mean, it was made worse than what it actually was. You know, he was a father figure for me for so many years. You know, he brought me to the club that I loved f as a kid. I played for the club. I was successful at the club with, you know, a number of the, um, of the young kids as well that we grew up with. So he gave me everything in my career that I needed. And so, you know, he'll always be the man that I always look up yeah. to because he gave me the dream of playing for Man United. So who kind of held out the olive branch? Who kind of went, oh, look, it's, well, I, I, there was no olive branch. It was just, you know, we just bumped into each other at certain occasions after I'd left Manchester United. And, um, you know, there was things that upset me, and I'm, obviously I'm sure, and, well, there definitely was things that upset him. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, like I said, you know, I have so much respect for him as a manager, as a man, and, you know, like I said, he gave me that yeah. dream. So you never talked it out, you just put it behind you? Yeah, no, we never even discussed it. Where's Oprah? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Do you hear what he's saying to you? <laughs> <laughs> but now, the, the, that mullet in the movie that you yeah. have, yeah. for you, Follically, it brings you <laughs> kind of full circle. It's a good point. Um, I did my very first job was a TV series called Corelli, where I met my wife, and I was sporting a mullet in that. And I know you haven't got a picture of it because literally, yeah, we, have, we do. Oh, no, come on. Of course we do. There it is. Oh, look at so that's Deb behind the bars there, and she was the prison psychologist, and I was prisoner Kevin Jones. And I had that mullet. The fact that she could fall in love with me with that <laughs> mullet, it was, it, she's a keeper. I was like, oh. But I, I've heard you an interview saying how she does like the way that you do look different in different movies. Yeah, she says she gets to have an affair every three months. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I presume she met with me. <laughs> uh, He's yeah. away working. <laughs> He's got a mullet. Hey, Bob. <laughs> Because I suppose people always think that Victoria uh, has a big say in what you look like in all the different looks. Does yeah. she? No, she doesn't. Yeah. I mean, 
every now and again. No, hello, like, nobody <laughs> believes you. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, no, she, obviously, she, she's my wife, so I ask her opinion, and yeah. sometimes I listen, and, well, most of the times I listen. <laughs> And sometimes still married, I don't. So you always We're listen, married, honestly. So, yeah. 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 And I've got another picture of you in an early role. I don't know mm. whether this is before Corelli or after Corelli. When Correct. were you in Beauty and the Beast? Uh, straight after Corelli. Oh, right. Literally straight after. Yes. And so this was you as Gaston. Yeah. Oh, look at all. This, I, I don't know if this story is true. It sounds on. Is this story true? It sounds unbelievable. Oh, okay. I know the story. It's true. It's. The, How is that possible? Well, it's my most embarrassing moment in life where I was getting these headaches it was my first job I'd done in a musical and I was getting headaches and I went to a, a naturopath and he said oh you're dehydrated you're sweating every night so you need to drink three liters of water a day I was like three liters so of course me being me I drank four liters right thinking three or four so I have a routine when I go on stage and I was on about five minutes after the show goes up I always pee when they say places. Places, ladies and gentlemen, you hear it, and I go and pee. So I peed. I'm waiting backstage, and I'm like, I've got to go again. I've got to go again. <laughs> I've, no, I've really got to go again. And that was my cue. So I walked on stage, really needing to go again. And that first number was very energetic. And it was <laughs> during that number where I pick up Belle, I literally have to pick her up. And as I'm picking her up, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Now, that's when I realised the, the muscles you need to release to sing are the very ones you need to tense to hold on. <laughs> so by the end of the number, I was literally bursting on it. I managed to hold on, and I remember the girl playing Belle was looking at me because I, I was singing like this. <laughs> and so it came to the last note. I was humiliated. I have to demonstrate this. So front of the stage here, and the very final note, it's a big F sharp and big... And I say, will you marry? And I say a little line. I'm thinking, if I sing this note, I'm peeing my pants. <laughs> if I don't sing this note, I'm humiliated in front of 2,000 people. Me! <laughs> the show must go on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, David, you are here tonight to talk about really an ambitious new project that you've got going, and it's to mark, and you kind of, where does the time go, your 10th anniversary as a UNICEF ambassador. Yeah. I know, that's... <laughs> and, and a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people take on these roles and don't get involved, but you really are involved in this project. Yeah, it's something I'm very proud of, because I know UNICEF is such a great organisation that does so much for many millions of children uh, and, and people around the world. And a 10-year anniversary is something that is very special and something that I'm very proud of. Um, so I sat down with UNICEF and we said, you know, I, I want to do more. I want to be involved with UNICEF for the next 10 years and, and make a change and create something, uh, a, a safe environment for children around the world. So we talked about seven different initiatives, seven different regions, and what I'm asking for now is, you know, 2015 is a year of hope. It's a year where world leaders are coming together to decide on their millennium goals. And we're asking them to put children and protection of children at, at the top of their list because it's just not good enough. You know, children are dying, millions of children are dying every single year just pre from preventable causes. And that can be changed, and it will be changed. And I'm, I'm very proud that I'm going to be part and you know, raising hopefully a lot of money over the next 10 years for that. And I think, it, uh, yeah, absolutely. Right well. and because you can, you know, you can talk about, you can talk about the, the seven regions and the seven projects, but the thing you can't really talk about is, you know, how good you are at doing it. Uh, so here's a clip from a, a short UNICEF film uh, where David Putnam tells us how amazing David Beckham is. I think David in the field working with UNICEF always seems to have that extra little bit of time and that's what young people, kids, people respond to, just giving that extra tiny bit of time. 2014 was a horrendous year for human rights generally and children in particular and I'd like to think that David and people like David just said you know enough's enough.
conveys an ease. And he allows you to think, my goodness me, this is a really nice guy who's doing what he wants to do and look what a fantastic result he's, he's getting. I wouldn't be at all surprised if David doesn't feel in some ways that a lot of his previous life has been part and parcel in training for what he can now do. that has given you this passport to do all this stuff and to touch all these people. It's one of the greatest things, you know, when people turn around to me and say, you know, it must be great being you. And the best thing about being David Beckham and the, the, the things that I've achieved throughout my career is the fact that I can go mm. into, you know, places around the world and be recognised and be able to shine a light on certain situations and then go and speak to prime ministers and say, can you help us? It's a good thing. And leaving football, it's nearly two years, isn't it? Since you... It is two years. Yeah. It is two years. So, two um, years. obviously you missed the game, but it must be kind of a relief as well to, to just not have that regime I, and that know, discipline. I, I wouldn't say it's a relief because, I've, you know, I was very lucky to have a career that lasted for 22 years, mm. you know, and I played for some of the best clubs in the world. I played with some of the best players and under the, the best managers in the world. So I had a, I had a very long career, but... You know, I wouldn't say it's a relief. It just, I knew it was the right time to, to finish. No days have you... Sorry. No, I'm go. A no, please go. Go. No. <laughs> go. Relax. Go. But no days, like, in the last two years. Like, after the first six months, you went, oh, maybe I'll go back. Like, any days you woke up and go, oh. Um, the, the day after, I literally was, like, questioning myself whether I'd made the right decision. And really? then every time, even now, you know, every time that I go to a big sporting event or watch England play, you know, I, I loved playing for all the clubs that I played with over the years, but the one thing that I miss more than anything is playing, playing for England. It's yeah. one of the things that I was most proud of, being given the England armband and being able to captain my country for the amount of time that I did. You know, it's the one thing that I miss out of football that really kind of every, not every single day, but every time England come around for their games and every time they go into a big competition, it's one thing that I really kind of, it really kind of gets to me. Yeah. But if Norwich City came back to you now... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Delia's uh, boys. Uh, I'll take it some maybe. But you are still involved in football because, of course, the boys all play. Yes, they do. Uh, yeah. Which must be weird pressure on them. Because uh, they're, yeah. they're all very good, I'm, I'm sure. Like, one of, uh, isn't Brooklyn, he's now... Uh, yeah, Brooklyn, Romeo and Cruz, they're all at the Arsenal Academy. Yeah. Um, and they... <laughs> <laughs> Norwich got a bigger. <laughs> but didn't you, didn't you, this is mean, didn't you ref one of the matches? Yeah, for Romeo. Romeo was playing in a game and Romeo is, the, he's the most emotional out of um, uh, all of the, all of the kids actually. Yeah. So, you know, I could say no to him and his bottom lip goes. So, yeah. you know, he was playing in this game and uh, the referee hadn't turned up. So, all the parents were looking at me as if to say. <laughs> <laughs> Really? You're taking um, yeah. uh, <laughs> so, so I went onto the pitch um, and I started refereeing the game. It was going great. They were w winning 4-0. Um, and then one of the opposition players went through um, towards uh, our goal. Uh, I shouldn't say Ooh. our goal. I was... <laughs> 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 the goal. <laughs> goal. Um, and Romeo went to make a tackle. And he missed the ball and took the player down. So it was an obvious penalty, and I'm thinking, oh, no, I really, don't, I really don't want to make this decision. But then I look at our parents, and they're like... And then I look at the other parents, and they're like... <laughs> I knew I had to give the penalty. So I give the penalty, and Romeo's looking at me, and I can see his like, eyes are welling up. I can see his bottom lips going. And, and the kid... And the, so the kid stepped up, took the penalty. I shouldn't say thankfully, but he missed it. <laughs> And, uh, and as, as, they, as uh, our team were breaking, um, as Romeo's team was breaking, um, he ran past me and said, I can't believe you did that, Daddy. <laughs> so. Right, it's time to meet our musical guest. He's an icon of the British music scene. His first album with his new band went platinum. And now he's back performing his current single, Ballad of the Mighty Eye. It is No Gallagher's High Flying Birds! <laughs>
Is it all Manchester happiness here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not from Manchester anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> and apparently your kids are big Hugh Jackman fans. My eldest lad wouldn't know him as Wolverine. He knows him from the WWE. Oh, really? Yeah, you're on the, the 100 greatest raw moments. <laughs> yeah, right. If I say to him I'm on the TV show Wolverine, he'll just go... But this? <laughs> but, but, then I, but he'll be watching this now and he'll go... No way, number 56 oh, on the this. best of Raw. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that was the most nerve-wracking moment of my life. I bet. Because everyone thinks the wrestlers don't hit. They hit. And so they came up with this idea. I was a guest host, so I had to go on. And they said, oh, you're going to be a tag team with one of the guys. And so he's going to be caught up. And I want, we want you just to hit the guy in, in the face. I said, what do you mean, hit him? He said, yeah, just hit him. So we did a rehearsal. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, just a soft hand, man, but just hit him. And that guy was saying to me, man, if, if you don't hit me, they're going to boo you. And I said, oh, I'm hitting you. <laughs> <laughs> so, literally, I'm never, my heart was racing, and he's, he's on the ropes, that picture of him on the ropes. He's looking at me going, hit me, hit me, right now. So I came up, and I'd organised to hit him in the neck, which it was, he didn't have one, it was just a shoulder that went into his <laughs> ear. And it skidded right off, went into his jaw and fractured his jaw. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when he came off, I'm like, sorry, he goes, you kidding? Did you see the slow motion? <laughs> <laughs> so I sent him, a, I sent him a, a case of beer the next day. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, the song that's off the new album, uh, Chasing Yesterday, the yeah. song's out now. Yeah. Yeah, but the album's out on the 2nd of March. Yes. Uh, and now, why do you do this to yourself? Because I've heard you don't like the name of your album. No, no, no. <laughs> well, what, 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 you must have named it, no. Oh, I did name it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, what, happened, what happened was I was uh, I I kind of couldn't come up with a title and I'd been out the night before and one of the girls from the office called me and said we need it's going up on iTunes tomorrow for pre-order so we need a title by three o'clock and I said what time is it now she said it's twenty past one <laughs> so I was like I kind of to look through lyrics and I kind of that kind of jumped out at me and uh, the minute that I seen it I thought. Stand it. Why would it <laughs> and uh, obviously it was up on iTunes before I knew it, and there it is. But you know, <laughs> titles are all I mean. You'd have to go a long way to find a worse title than What's the Story, Morning Glory, wouldn't you? Titles become themselves, wouldn't it? And the, the other thing, the, the, you do so many things to just torment yourself. Videos. Why do you do the videos if you hate them so much? That's a question I ask my management <laughs> a lot. I can't stand them. What is the one see? Have you been one? You've been one for us. Will I be? Yeah, go on. <laughs> I'd, I'd love to be. I'd love, right. I've, always been, I've always been a huge fan. You know, obviously there's a big Manchester divide with United and City, and there has been for many, many years. But when I used to play for England, I remember Noel being at one of the games, and I went up to him and shook his hand, and he kind of looked he at me. Then after uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've always been a fan of Oasis, obviously, and, and no in general, so of course I'll be in one of your videos. Nice one, well, we've got that on camera now. Yeah, it's done, it's done. Okay. So, no time for FJ tonight, and so that is it. Please let us know Gallagher! David Beckham! New Jackman! And Will Smith and Margot Robbie! Join me next week with some very special guests to celebrate 30 years of comic relief. I'll see you next time. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.